friends. You won't believe how happy it makes me feel to be home. And of course by home I mean united with Freya, our home on wheels. And so in this video I want to tell you the whole story. I want to tell you how we got here. Starting from why we had to live a whole week in a gas station in one of the biggest cities in the world. One of the workers is just sleeping in the middle of the gas station. It's different. To of course how and where we shipped our van after India. And by the end of this video, you are going to be one of the first ones to know where our journey will take us next. And of course also why Lizo is not here with me at the moment. But for all of this to make sense, let's first go back about six weeks. As some of you might remember from our last videos, before the little holiday to Maldives, me and my partner Lizu were on a quest to drive our van from Europe to Japan. It took us almost a year to get from our home country Estonia to Nepal, and it was our dream to make this journey happen. But just like it is with some things in life, it just wasn't meant to be. Just got back from Chinese embassy. There goes our dream. And after being rejected a visa to enter China from Nepal, we had to come up with a new plan. Once again, we're coming to you from a situation where we have three days left on our visa. We don't have the next visa. We're totally stuck in Nepal. <laughs> Due to the border restrictions in Myanmar, going forward was not an option. But due to the politically, let's say, uncensored videos we made in Iran, never seen anything like this. We also could not go back the way we came. After those videos, we literally received death threats, and checking if the threats were real was something we would rather not test on our own skin. As our visa in Nepal was running out, it left us with only one option. Last morning in Nepal, and now we're gonna head that way to Birgunj border with India. Time to move on. Many of you had actually recommended in the comment section that we should also see the southern part of India. Just entered India, cows, garbage, absolute chaos. But probably due to the vibe we gave out ourselves, I'm not happy to be back. This country was not treating us well. First, we got into few minor car accidents where people simply drove into our van. Then this happened. Just came to a gas station in India. First thing I always do is, can I pay with card? I said, they said yes. We took a fair bit of diesel and you can't pay with card. Of course you can. So I don't have cash and now they're gonna suck it out of the van. I've already wasted 30 minutes here, but who wants to drive in the daylight anyway, right? Yeah, instead of letting us go to the nearest ATM, this was the manager's course of action. And finally, after spending a night next to a small village, this situation in the morning made us realize that it was time to leave. I just don't understand those people. Yeah, three shepherds had pushed rocks onto the road to block us. I don't know, people from what nation do this? Like, you can see the rock has been here. They had pushed them down the slope, but luckily, together we had just enough strength to move them. That really was a close call. For us, this was the last drop. We did not feel welcome in this country. And from here on, the only goal was leaving. And the only way out was with a ship. Luckily, two of our friends were already in the middle of this process. And in their sea container, there was just enough room for a little yellow van. So we made our way to Mumbai, one of the biggest cities in the whole world. I can't believe it's probably one of the last trials I'm gonna do in India. Once there, our friends took us to our shipping agent. And after about 50 signatures and a lot of money, I'm getting financially ruined. We secured ourselves a spot on a boat leaving in about a week. Honestly, 
shipping a vehicle is much more expensive and complicated than we would ever have thought. And from India to our final destination, it cost around two and a half thousand euros per car. So if any of you is wondering why we just didn't ship our car to Japan to complete the dream, then yeah, we simply don't have enough funds to do this shipping thing more than once. Anyways, next few days we spent like this. And while in Mumbai, this is our base pretty much. So there's a gas station, over there are our Swiss friends and uh, we are parked here. During the daytime, it's 32 degrees and 90% humidity. Nighttime, believe it or not, 29 degrees and 90% humidity. Most of the time we spent cleaning and getting the machine ready for shipping, which pretty much meant getting it low enough to fit in the container. It's all sweat. But we also had some fun times. For example, in the fruit market, I was able to find my favorite fruit in the world. I hadn't tasted them for more than five years, since they only grow in tropical and very stable climates. We bought almost five kilo of the most expensive fruits in the market, but I couldn't be more happier. Yeah, these things are called mangosteens. And if you see them in a store, make sure to taste them. It's hard to describe, it's so sweet, soft, like you're eating a cloud, it's just so delicious. Heaven has been good thing to taste. It was weird and funny experience living in a gas station. And without a doubt, we will always remember the time we spent here. But after days of waiting, it was finally time to pack up. Today is a big morning, we've been packing, we've been stressing, and now we're gonna drive her to the port and try to fit her in a container. We followed our friends to the port. And over there, it took a whole day to get everything in order. Or well, we actually didn't do much other than played cards and watch sweaty Indian guys work hard. But our agent surely worked hard because by the evening, we were ready to fill the container. This part of the process was actually fun. And although I wasn't 100% sure if we would fit, then as it turns out, we had room to spare. It was very tight. One centimeter. Our friend's car, Blue Bear, wasn't that lucky. And we even had to deflate the tires to make it fit. But nevertheless, 15 minutes later, it was finished. And we were ready to close those doors for the next month. And this seal shows that nobody else goes in our container. What followed next could be called a time of separation. Meaning that for the first time in a year, we were not together with our van. And let's just say it wasn't as hard as we thought it would be. First, we spent three weeks discovering the tropical paradise called Maldives. Yeah, it really deserves the name paradise. It was nice to live in a room with toilet and shower again. It's weird, I'm, I'm not used to this look luxury. It's not extreme luxury, it's just a regular hotel room, but our standards are very low. And we enjoyed every moment of it. After the Maldives, we headed to Turkey to be closer to our final destination. And I like to think that Freya and Blue Bear had a good time as well, since they also got to visit many exotic countries though I don't think they saw too much of it. In Turkey, we pretty much only relaxed, ate good food and met some friends. It was amazing. It felt liberating to once again be in a culture we knew. And well, we had almost forgotten how wonderful the tastes in this country are. Is this the only reason why you came back to Turkey? Yes. <laughs> food. Food and friends. Honestly, I think this nation makes the best food in the world. But there was something else that happened while in Turkey. This is last day together with Liso. Now I'm gonna go and put her on a bus. 
Yeah, I guess I might have made it sound a bit more dramatic as it actually was, but few of our friends were getting married back home. And since one of us had to pick up the van from the port, Lizu had to go home alone. And I missed two wedding parties. Well, as it made me a little sad, I continued in the same rhythm as before. It's the last night in Turkey, Istanbul, and honest to God, I think it's the first country ever where I've only come here to eat. I've been here like eight days, and I'm pretty much, I've gained like five, six kilos, I feel fat. Oh yeah. And well, this doesn't help. I just have an open box of baklava waiting here because I'm leaving tomorrow morning. I have to eat it. <laughs> I don't know. And then arrived the big day. I packed my things and were once again on the road. I just got news that uh, last night Freya arrived in a port that she's supposed to. So probably today the cranes are going to lift her off the cargo ship. And it's perfect timing because I just made it to the airport. And there is even a slight chance that I'll make it there today to pick her up. But I'm not sure. It's going to be a long flight. Airports and air travel believe it or not, is still just as uncomfortable as always. But after three hours in the air, I had made it. Or well, almost made it. Okie dokie, now I somehow have to get 200 kilometers away from here to the port. <laughs> First impressions of this country were definitely not as efficient as they say this place is. Yeah, it took me 15 minutes to actually get the ticket from the machine. Really? <laughs> it gave me like five cents coins, like I won a lottery, ding, 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 ding. But I think I have a ticket now. Then, fire alarm stalled me for another 40 minutes. Please leave the railway station immediately through the next market exit. Help people which are needy and follow the instructions of the staff. Reaching the van that day started to look impossible. Luckily, after about an hour delay, things started moving again. I had to take three different inner city trains. And if it wasn't for this girl, I would have definitely gotten lost. And yeah, I was too afraid to ask for her permission, so I just filmed her back. Anyways, what followed was another one and a half hour train ride. This is definitely the last train I need to take, but uh, I don't know where can I get the ticket for it. And I was quickly reminded that compared to the countries I had visited before, the prices here in Europe are much higher and the weather just kind of sucks. It's not in raining as well, but it cost 17 and a half euros and uh, I'm going to jump on, on this one here. I made it to the port city around 6 p.m. Clearly, it was too late to pick up the van the same day. And so I decided to have a little walk in town. It's quite weird, walking on the street that's calm. There's no honking, there's no hustle and bustle. It's And the greenery, like I have missed trees, I have missed trees so much. It was a beautiful feeling to once again see familiar architecture. But what shocked me the most was the fact that all the rules were once again followed. Crossing the street, Indian style. Woohoo, still alive. Later, I even decided to have a little bit of what is now known as the most popular food in this country. Well, can't really say that it tastes much different from what I had in Turkey. I'm having small doubts if the, if the plane actually left the country, if I actually left Istanbul. And I also got some good news. The friends that we shipped our van together with they're already here and they offered me to stand, spend the night with them. So I think I don't need to find a place to stay, stay myself. Thank you Larissa and Ziva. You guys are awesome.
Next morning started fast. We ate, jumped on a bus, last bus ride. And of course, we're once again greeted by the beautiful European weather. Then we had to walk the last few kilometers to pick up our vans. The excitement was in the air. I never thought that seeing a car would spark such emotions in me. The yellow color is there. I can't believe it's made it here all the way from India. It's right there. You can kind of tell that we're in Germany. No way we're going in without Halvis vest and protective gear. Yay! <laughs> but as it turns out, no matter which part of the world she's in, Freya really is like a home to me. Only one more thing. Is it gonna start? Yay! <laughs> Woo! The handbrake has been on for a month and it's stuck. As we were once again getting our vans ready for the road, I could not help but wonder. It had taken a whole month for the container to make it from India to Germany. Yet for me, Germany was just the beginning. It was the cheapest place to ship the car and a quick stop before our next big adventure. It's working. I think we're done. For the last time, I said my goodbyes and thank yous to Silva and Larissa. And then, it was time to leave the port. I'm almost out of the port now. I think I still need to go through the customs. Which was surprisingly easy. Even too easy to be honest. I literally just drive through the toll place, troll booth. Nobody stopped us, there was no road stops. It's weird because we came straight from India to Germany and nobody stopped, nobody checked anything. I could have had 20 people back there. What? It took me quite a while to once again get used to the traffic rules. The traffic here in Europe, it's so different. Like, there's rules again. People are actually following them. Nobody's driving the opposite way on my highway lane. <laughs> I can't believe I'm so excited about traffic. Like, what the heck? Can you see this? They're using blinkers again! Whee! But there was still one thing I needed to do in Germany. Okay, but we do have a mission today as well. And the mission is to do one of the biggest shoppings of my life. All together, I spent about an hour in the store. Created some havoc. And ended up with a trolley full of food. The reason for this shopping trip was actually quite obvious. Hello. Hello, how are you brother? The countries where our adventure will continue next are just much more expensive and every penny spent here would save us a fair bit in the future. Pretty much 160 euros worth of food. <laughs> I'm not sure how long it's gonna last us but <laughs> we got a fun month ahead for sure. Still raining, still a bit nasty, but we did the shopping. So yeah, uh, since van life or, or like wild camping is not allowed in Germany, I don't think we will stay any longer. We got the shopping done and next up, Denmark. Well, my friends, I guess now with all the preparations done, it is finally time to reveal how exactly the adventure on this channel will continue. Our plan is simple. We want to drive as far north as the north goes on this continent. And to make it there, we ask you along on a journey through the Nordic countries. We will follow the roads of ancient Vikings. Celebrate the unique and beautiful nature these countries hold. And like always, offer you a front row seat to some of the most amazing stories that can be found on our planet. Thank you for watching and remember, the adventure starts next Thursday in a little bit less than a week. 
I feel like I'm forgetting something. Airport. Airport. 